by it's 8 a.m. We have about 15-20 uh, minutes to go with our State of the Nation today. And with me in studio is David Matsanga, who's chairman of the African World Media, and Nicholas Gumbo, who's member of parliament of Rarieda. And MP, I'll start with you. And I'll be sampling some of your thoughts, by the way. Uh, thank you for the tweets that are coming in and keep them coming. I'll be reading them shortly. Matsanga says that this process from the very beginning seems to have been flawed, even by who is before court. But let's go to who's before court and how the process as we saw it unfold from the Ocampa time, the naming of the um, suspects and the whole procedures that we've seen to change of guard from him to Prosecutor Fatou Ben Sudan, what she's been saying and also what we've been hearing from witnesses. Do you get that sense that there's really been miscarriage of justice even just on conducting and putting together these particular cases? Well, of course, you know, it's a back and forth. I mean, uh, there are witnesses who have said they lied. There are also people who are saying those witnesses were induced to lie. So it's a back and forth. But I, but I think um, looking at the process, and I want to get back to really where, where uh, we came from. I think um, this country must learn to know that there are some things that happen, even in the lives of an individual. For you to overcome them, you have to be ashamed of them. The thing that happened with regards to the, 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 the clashes of end of 207 and 208, these were very shameful acts. These were terrible crimes. And if as a country we can't feel a deep sense of shame and say collectively, never again, not just say it with our mouths, but give it residence in our hearts, that we don't ever. But when you see uh, like uh, what is happening now, you see people trying to give positions that in their view, they intend mainly to be appealing to the, those who are before the ICC. I think that's a wrong way to do it. My view at this point in time is that the president and the deputy, because they're both at the ICC, I think it is time now they stop listening to the hordes of people who are telling them things that's obviously some more. But, but, do you, but do you think, especially when um, Ocampo was at the helm of the pro Office of the Prosecution, he, that he played up this matter? He was quoted and he said it in media that if we have a strong case, yes. we're going to get this. And now they're back to scratch. It's back to status conference to mm -hmm. determine if at all there is a case to answer. It has completely fallen apart. Do you get the sense, do you feel that it was overplayed in as far as what they had as evidence against the president? Well, well I would would want to believe that uh, the aim of any prosecutor is, is, is to try to, to secure conviction. So to the extent that Ocampo was making those pronouncements, it could have been a matter of his style, it could have been his way of doing things. Some of us didn't quite agree with the way he was doing things. I personally thought that there was too much showmanship in the way he did things. But that for me, really, uh, Sophia, is not the point. The point is where we are now as a country. If you look at the way the pronouncements are, especially from us, the political class, the pronouncements that are coming, it's almost becoming like a denial. People, some people are almost wanting to say, look, this thing happened, we have agreed to live as a community, but do you address a problem by not going back to the root causes? Have we really addressed the causes of what happened in Kenya? My submission is that we have not. And as long as we keep on, you know, brushing, scratch, scratching the surface mm -hmm. and not delving into the causes, preferring to deal with very ineffective symptoms and wishing the problems will go away. For me, I think that is not the way this country is going to progress. So I am looking at what is before us and I am not a judge or a prosecutor or an investigator in this thing. The case against the president looks very weak. For me, we need a closure because until we get a closure, like I said with my opening remarks, until we get a closure, this thing affects everybody. The president has a duty to you, Sophia. He has a duty to me. We don't want him to be distracted. There are real problems facing the country. We want him to lead from the front in tackling these problems. As long as these distractions are there, it is not good for us. So okay. for me, if going to the ICC is one way of confronting the judges mm -hmm. and telling them, look, here I am, you, you say you have these things against me. The witnesses say they don't have anything against me. What is it more that you want from me? Mm. I think he, by him going there, he's more or less saying that this thing really 
if there is no case, let there be no case by him going there and confronting, as it were, right. the, the, the prosecutor. Yes. For me, I think it could even be an opportunity for him to elevate his statementship. Even higher. <laughs> even higher, yes. You hold that this has been flawed from the very beginning. Let's yes. not go back to who should have been in yes. court, but let's yes. go to how this was put together. Yes. From Ocampo's time and the other ICC officials, yes. and what we are now hearing in court. Yes. The, uh, Sophia, let me not blame. Blame game is not there now. Now is to say to rescue this country from becoming a prior state. Mm -hmm. That's all. The blame game is gone. I said it. I said there was a problem. The man who came here and said he has a tight case. Where is the tight case? In both cases, they have collapsed. The, the, the supporters of Uhuru and Ruto who say there is a problem is not, they are not against the court. They are against the method in which the two are being undersung. The three are being taken in court when we know the witnesses have even said we lied. Then we even recycle the same witnesses who lied. In fact, they play the lies to you. They tell you you are in the Eldoret when you are in Nairobi. Surely, this is not the but way. But the question of the but witnesses and the lies just on that particular yes. point, each side sometimes is pointing a finger at each other. The no. prosecution accusing defense mm. of interfering with these lawyers, the suspects, Can I? and on the other side, the defense saying it's prosecution and the officials are the ICC. Can I tell you a story? The chief prosecutor said Dr. David Matsanga tampered with witness number four. Yes, I am live. Those, I am live. Can I tell you this? The witness I tampered with, or who wrote it to me and said Matanga <laughs> helped me with Africa World Media because I recounted my evidence in 2010. But the chief prosecutor has used my evidence, which is recounted. That's how I came in. I defeated the chief prosecutor on points. Two, this, it, is, it is on an ICC <laughs> website. I'm not manufacturing it. Matsanga versus the chief prosecutor. Mr. OTP4 told the chief prosecutor, don't use my evidence. The chief prosecutor went ahead to drag Mufaura, to drag Uru Kenyatta on a case that was already recanted. Evidence recanted. Two, let's, let's come here and look at the scenario. This court sentences you first, then the verdict next. Have you seen what is happening? There is nowhere a defense counsel has ever won something in this court. Which type of of, of, of prostitution is, uh, court is this? You go with evidence. The defense of Uru Kenyatta have said our client was free from the day OTP But that is not collapsed. correct because we've seen that some of the initial suspects no longer, they were let go. So you yes. that would selection. not be a correct position. So the, the process you talked about, fraud selection. NGOs came in and said, this one out, that one out. We need the one with a deeper pocket. Uh, I, I, I wait. keep going back let, to that let, part. But yes, but let me, George was let me come, Let's take let, this let call me. first, Matsanga. George is on the line. George, yes. good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for calling. Go ahead with your contribution. Is uh, Dr. Matsanga is contributing overwhelmingly about uh, what's going on? Mm -hmm. So what is going on, in your opinion? George? All the cases that are involving our two uh, leaders. You are supposed to give us an advice so that these leaders of ours can go to ICC, come back clean and continue running the country. Whatever happened, happened. Whatever Ocampo did, whatever Fadu did, is not material right now. Right now we want a solution to help us have our leaders back here and run the country. So don't go back and tell us how qualification or all that you, what did what you advise give us a straightforward way let okay. the two leaders go to icc clear the case come back and run the country period all right george thank you very much so george is saying instead of going back to all of that yes. icc could in essence even clear all of these people exactly. so will it still be a bad court after no. it has cleared them? no 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 i have not said icc is a bad court i've said the prosecutor just otp is the bad institution i agree with wafla the time has come when we have to go and face it and let the president say, yes, I'm here. The witness died. The witness evidence was faked. The prosecutor has admitted herself. There is no evidence. Therefore, in a normal court, you are an engineer. 
If the metro is wrong, do you continue to build with it in a bridge which will kill people? Her, her argument is because yes. of the position of the president, then yes. he perhaps no, 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 and the people. Uru Kenyatta was not a president when this evidence was collected. Hello. But now, Uru when Kenyatta, she's been asking he for has more not even, we information, spoiling. you see, we go back to the same place, Sofia. We started spoiling this thing a long time ago. Even if Uru Kenyatta was not a president today, this case would not have evidence. All right, I'll come so, to you, Member of Parliament, shortly because we want to hear. Um, from you as well on the question of when you say we failed as a country but what is the role of parliament you were there when this did not pass when Kenya did not exercise and choose to go for the option we have locally to be able to deal with this here um, so we'll talk about that but Obira is online good morning Obira yes good morning I can get you yes go ahead uh, thank you so much I want to start the Yes, go ahead. I want to thank the panelists on their different perspectives on the issue. And I would like to point out the following thing. One, given that this case is a culmination of political events in Kenya, mm -hmm. I agree with them that it is a political case. Two, I would also like to make some insight on what David Masanga is saying that uh, the deep pocket syndrome was used in selecting who was uh, culpable to go to the ICC. I'd like to dispute that from the onset because we'll not say at the point that uh, Uhuru wrote, I mean, uh, we was uh, a deep pocket. So he must announce that school of thought. Lastly, I am of the view that uh, our president should just attend the status conference because we don't know, maybe it is on that day that he will be told that there is no case and set free. So I, I strongly feel that our president must attend because his case is a weak one. And on that day, maybe most likely he will be let off the news. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for watching and for calling. Um, Meshmua, when you confess that you actually concede that you failed the country, so what then for the victims, especially in this particular situation, because they continue to await that justice, that it be done and it be seen to be done. These cases seem to be falling apart. No mechanisms home for other suspects, for other atrocities that were committed. What then becomes the next step? Well, I think, uh, uh, Sophia, the, I, I, like I said, I sat in the last parliament when the ICC matter came. Mm. And sometimes I feel very pained that the people who are being accused as having colluded with the ICC to get suspects to The Hague are actually the people who are at the forefront warning against the dangers of Kenyans being tried in foreign lands. But you see, the problem is uh, when our political situations unfold. Usually they are encapsulated in a lot of euphoria. Usually they are encapsulated in a lot. You, there's so much psychophancy. People want to say things that they think are expedient to say at the time without really looking into the wider ramifications of those pronouncements. And I think this is where we came from. When the issue of the ICC came, and I, and, I, and I want to commend the late Mutula Kilonsu. He made so many attempts, stood alone on the floor of the house and said, look, ladies and gentlemen, we better sort this thing out here in this country. It is good for our country. It is good for the image of the people of Kenya. It is good for the respect we command internationally that we sort ourselves out. But who would listen to him? That is when we started hearing pronouncements like, let them come. If they come, this thing will Don't take 90 vague. years. Don't go be vague. Hague. Let's go to the Hague. So what, Honestly. Mm -hmm. So when you get, and, 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 and really, uh, uh, which brings us to the point now, I would call on the president, and I know I interacted with the Uru Kenyatta very closely when we were in the last parliament. He's a very approachable person, a very amiable person. Mm -hmm. This is a time to listen to his inner self and to listen to the oath of office he took and not the many psychophants around him. Do you him. agree with those who say ISIS is a political court targeting African leaders? 
In a sense, yes. But you see, uh, Sophia, how does the world work? I, there was, I had an argument. I've had many arguments. People saying, why is the U.S. not a member of the ICC? Why are they forcing African leaders? It's simple. The U.S. is not a member of the ICC because the U.S. has no use for the ICC. And the U.S. Are you saying there are no atrocities committed there? There are atrocities. In fact, if you so ask why me, doesn't if you ask it? me, no, 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 because the U.S. can manipulate its way around the ICC. And, and that is, I gave you the example of, of, of the animal kingdom, how it works. You may have, have your point, but you have the teeth and the claws to okay. bite. Okay. 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 Yeah. Exactly. The, 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 the MP has come to my point. To, up to date. Look at Article 67, which protects the rules rights of the Roman statute. His rights. This case cannot go on indefinitely. It says the case must be done expeditiously, finish fairly. It is the the the, the defense has said eh, Article 67, our person is under siege. The court is not listening. Look at what they have done. This is the latest filing on with victim's lawyer. The victim's lawyer comes to Nairobi, sits on Gongo Road, picks up some Kenyans, political victims. Look here. This is even, Sophia, as we talk, this case against Uru is even getting doctored. Even you know, somebody here is saying that you should be on Uhuru's legal team. What for you? What, what is your in in this? Because you're very passionate about it. Are you part of his team, team, the people I have that never, are... I've told you on this, in this bench, I've never had tea with Uru. Not with Ruto. So what is this? Not coffee. Because you're, you're, you're not even Kenyan. Man, I am, but you're I, very passionate about his exactly, case. Exactly. If you spoil Kenya, you kill Uganda. So that is where I will not have my passion mother comes will, from. My mother, my country will die if Kenya had a problem. Therefore, people who talk like that is, is Besuda Kenyan. She, she is prosecuting Kenya. She's a chief prosecutor of the International uh -huh. Criminal Court. I, she I does not need to be Kenyan. I am also an international person who has suffered in the process. Look at this. A victim's lawyer comes to collect 154 victims, purported the political victims. He sits in Parkland's sports club with political elite of opposition of this country, selects from one region. I'm not going to name it. Gumba will know. He's my friend. Selects. I don't know. Yeah, I'm now telling you. This is the application I made. Uh, uh, Sophia, this is the application I've made to the court. I have not feared the court. I have taken a judicial route on the court. That's why the chief prosecutor cannot come for me. I'm in court with her. So oh, she no. can't turn it to issue a warrant or anything. No, this is exactly what you said. People threaten people here. There's no warrant on me when I'm in the court. I filed two days ago. So you have not interfered with witnesses because no. you have been accused of this I thing. Won. You have not. The case again is OTP4. You remember the famous OTP4, OTP4. OT... I won that one because I was. But right. do you think there are people because it I is. I don't know. The is... people who were there. Uh, uh, Sophia, let me tell you the people who are there. I am the one who has written to the appeal chamber to say 15 Kenyans, 15, one five, should be investigated for having coached witnesses. Do you know what they have, that court did? It said, Matsanga, if you ever release these names of 15 people in the order you have given to us five years in jail, I'm gagged. I swear, if God is watching, I'm gagged. So I'm fighting with the court. Now, yesterday they said, I think we are going to look at your case. Because Ruto's witnesses were coached by the men whom I have accused there. And they're in the appeal chamber. This is how this court works, Gumbo. So what Kenyatta is not fearing to go to, to ICC. He has been taking the summons. Ruto is in the ICC. They have agreed. Sang is there. But they are saying there is no fairness in the system. Why do you gag Matanga from pointing out 15 men who build houses in Rwanda using Rutos and Uru and Sanga's pride? Victims have not been paid. My role is to expose that. Whether it is in Kenya, whether it is in London where I live, I bet 
I will take it to the last point until I clear the three Kenyans who are in the court. What do you, Watch me. What do you make of what's happening and unfolding when it comes to witnesses? Because across the board on all the cases, it's been spectacular. The things we're hearing from them, the retraction of statements, them saying they've been promised a better life in the West and education and all these other things. What do you make of that? Who do you think is lying to everybody else? Because each side's pointing a finger at each other. What was Sophia, uh, like I said uh, at the beginning, I mean, the moment, uh, you know, we, we are prosecuting the, the, the two highest holders of public office in Kenya, it was always going to be a problem. We are, after all, an African country. I, I, even I, those who have come up as witnesses, I, I, I probably, most of us wouldn't even have the courage that they do. But you realize that even as we speak today, even the prosecutor herself is also saying some of these witnesses have also been told to lie. So it is accusations, counter accusations. But I think in all this, what is being missed really mm -hmm. is the plight of the victims. Correct. You know, what, how? You know, if a country cannot collectively be ashamed of something as heinous as what happened in Kenya. How do we want to make advancements mm. as a country? Mm. We have to come to a point, Sophia, where we have to say this thing was utterly So shameful. what must be done? Because you made that point. What must be done to what, make sure there's justice what for victims? Must be, you know, these things start from a collective will of the people. The will to address the problem. And it doesn't just extend to what happened in 2000. There have been a lot of historical... But when that last parliament missed the opportunity, so yes, when we, next we, we have miss, another resource? We missed the opportunity. Yes. But the fact that we missed the opportunity doesn't mean that we can't reopen the whole thing and look at it. There have been a lot of historical injustice. I am of the opinion that Kenya as a country, if Kenya has missed opportunities, it is its inability to harness the best resource mm. that it has, which is the diversity of our own people. Our I, time I is have. up. Matsanga, you are going to wind up with this question yes. to both of you. Should Kenya withdraw from the ICC? We withdraw is under Article 127. It's very clear. The Should Methodist, Kenya withdraw? No. We withdraw under Article 127, Sophia. It's very clear. The MP will tell you we withdraw is a process. You start. Kenya started it. It stopped somewhere in the middle. But let me tell you, Another warning, which I have to tell you as a person who knows Very this Very quickly, our time is up. The warning is this. If Kenya does not close the back door, which is, there is a back door where wind is coming. The chief prosecutor is going to terminate Uhuru Kenyatta's case on 8th. She will, go, she will move. I have a feeling. I've been followed, following this court. Okay, terminate. Article 53, she will say, sorry, I have no evidence. Kenya blocked me, blah, blah, blah. So I withdraw. But the same morning, on 9th of October, the chief prosecutor is going to be on a flight back here because we have not closed what the MP is saying. There is nothing here. There is no special division of the high court. So she'll come country. and do what? She will come to pick fresh suspects. I bet. She will do that. Watch, watch the space. All right. It's a few days. That's your prophecy. You have not, no, yeah. not prophecy. We'll watch and see. We have not closed the door. The Chief Justice, the DPP, the AG should give candid advice to the government to open up a special division of the High Court to stop the Gambian woman coming for more suspects here who would not be Uru or Ruto. All right. Finally. Yeah, Sophia, uh, and of course here again I'm speaking as who I am, who is the engineer. One of the things that engineering has taught me is that the answers to the most difficult problems actually always hide behind those problems. Mm -hmm. Withdrawing from the ICC or not, for me, is not an issue. I think what Kenya must do, right. which is the reality, if you look at the preamble to our constitution, the third line of the preamble to our constitution recognizes the diversity of the people of Kenya. The same way it recognizes the diversity of the people of Kenya, it also recognizes the fact that although we are diverse, we have a duty to live as one indivisible nation. Right. If we can find in our hearts, because it has been said many times that laws exist due to perversity of nobility. If people choose to be noble, if people choose to accept, I cannot, for instance, come here and pretend 
that have more right to live in Kenya or have more right to have more in person. Kenya than you, Sophia. Okay. If we can go to the basics and accept that Kenya is a diverse nation, each one of us, irrespective of where they come from, has an equal right to live in this country and that justice is a matter that must reside in our hearts, not in the books, not in the courts. In fact, some of the better governed countries in the world have much smaller or no constitutions at all. Okay. So the letter of the law and the spirit of the law are always a different thing. Right. And the moment we accept to let the law reside in our hearts, even if it is not written on paper, for me, this country will move forward. Nicholas Gumbo, Member of Parliament, Arieda, thank you very much for being with us. And David Matsanga, who is Chairman of Africa World Media as well, thank you, thank uh, you. for coming to the show this morning and uh, discussing with us this matter of the ICC, what options the President has. You've made your prophecy. We'll watch to see yes. if that's going to happen. Of course, 8th of October, the big day that uh, we'll wait to see whether the President will honor those summons at the International Criminal Court. And if not, what will happen after that?